In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In The Last Days television program with myself, Martin Blackham. Great to have you with us. Natalie's behind the scenes and, sh and she says hello to you. We're the program that looks at Israel. We look at the news and uh, features from Israel and Hebrew teaching. So thank you so much for joining us today. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, you can email us at info at inthelastdays.com. It's great to receive uh, uh, your emails and letters. So thank you for that. Today, uh, if you were watching last week, you remember we had Rabbi Aaron Leibovitz in the studio and he's again with us today. Thank you so much for giving us your time. He's a very busy man and uh, with the um, uh, Jerusalem City Council. So thank you so much for coming across again uh, today to be with us. Uh, Rabbi Aaron Leibovitz is originally from California in the United States. He's the founder and director of Salam Yaakov Yeshiva, which prepares students for rabbinic ordination. He's the secretary of the Jerusalem's Yerushalayim Mim, political party and a Jerusalem city councillor. He was previously the rabbi of the Kol Rinar synagogue, sometimes known as the bomb shelter synagogue, synagogue I guess because it met in a, in a, in a bomb shelter. Yes. And uh, for six years, he was also the rabbi at Derek Etz Haim Yeshiva. He's the founder of Synergy Training. He was for three years an education, educational officer in the Israeli army. Uh, program director at Gesher. You're married to Miriam Leibovitz and they have five children. He's written a blog between heaven and earth. And we were talking a bit about the Jacob's Ladder. I guess that fits into yeah. the um, heaven and earth thing. He's featured on The Voice of Israel, uh, Jerusalem Post, Haaretz News, The New York Times, and is particularly active in the community regarding kosher uh, certificates uh, for restaurants. Now, um, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, and I didn't hit and I wanted to hit when we were talking last week was about the, there's a, a scripture in, in Isaiah, it's Isaiah 2-3, about the Torah coming out of, um, out of Jerusalem, out of Zion and, and you starting a yeshiva in Jerusalem. So when, it, when you did that, did you think about Isaiah 2-3, was that something in your mind or, or, or was it something afterwards or? Coming out of, coming out of Jerusalem is a, is a big part of the work and it's work which is connected to, to uh, teaching, to, to a vision where teaching is not, is not only an intellectual uh, art, but teaching is, um, teaching is modeling, it's modeling life, it's modeling community. And, I, d uh, I just better explain, I've suddenly realized I've said something and uh, to explain to our, our friends at home and the viewers about the Torah is w when we say Torah we're talking about uh, the books, uh, the five books of Moses, <laughs> aren't we? So yes. for, for them to know. Yes, although, although I would say the literal translation of the word Torah is teaching so that it can be used to refer to the five books of Moses or it can be used to teach, to, to, to speak to the entire body of of, um, of the Jewish the Jewish teachings, which is which is very interesting because um, um, it's something that I, I've got a question about. That when we think traditionally of yeshivas, we think of Torah teaching. Would they normally do other books from the Bible? Or, absolutely, or? absolutely. We study um, we, you know the um, um, the five books of the Moses, of Moses. We call we call the written tradition. But in addition to the written tradition, there's an oral tradition which over the generations has been written down. So they're both written, but, 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 but the five books of Moses are written, of course, um, uh, by, by, by Moses under direction from God. So they are, they are, God's, they are God's words. It's uh, the, the, cl the clearest, most direct revelation that, uh, that the world has ever known is the revelation that Moses received according to the Jewish tradition. Now the, the other ones, would that, would that uh, correct term for that, would that be a commentary? And then, and then, of course, well, I would say, first of all, you have the lesser prophets, which are, which are, which are the rest of the Jewish canon, Isaiah, Ezekiel, etc., um, and um, which are which are revelatory, but a lower, uh, I would say, a less uh, a less clear lens of revelation than that of Moses. And then the rest would be commentary. Um, but but in our tradition, the commentary itself is also divinely inspired. It's not it's not a, a simple human interpretation. Um, but there's a level of divine inspiration. Um, and, you know, 
perhaps uh, on a certain a certain gradient of of um, of levels of of, uh, of inspiration, such as we might say a great musician um, is inspired, and um, and certainly there are many artists that feel that there's a there's a there's a, there's, a, there's a, a, a divine inspiration coming through them as they as they create. Now, there's two two things. I want to talk about the Jerusalem City Council. I'm going to get onto that for our viewers. It was so interesting uh, last week, but I just want to hit one thing. Uh, which is uh, the phenomenon, and maybe we might even talk a bit more about that at the end, but the phenomenon of Christians being interested in Torah. Is this something that you were aware of? Or? Yes, yes. I mean, I've been, I've been um, in conversation with Christians, with Christian leadership, um, for, for well over a decade, and um, have, some, have, have a very, very close friendship with a, with a, with a Christian pastor. Um, and the um, you know the place where we where we have the opportunity to discuss the what you know what we share and where we differ, I think I think is very I think is very precious. Um, I I believe that it's precious to God. Um, but it, do you uh, think it, it's fascinating for the Jewish people because they're saying you know we've been studying Torah for since Mount Sinai, and now suddenly there's these other people who want to study Torah as well. And uh, I think that there's a sense of, um, well, you know, I, I don't want to speak for the Jewish people because, you know, let me speak for myself, for my own experience. Um, the, the prophets describe a time when the, when, the world, when the world comes together, when the whole world comes together in the light of God. And, um, and I, I assume the name of this show refers to such a process. Um, so, so how would that come about if not through through um, the world beginning to speak to one another? And um, you know, the history of the Jewish people and the relationship between the Jew Jews and Christians is not an easy one. And there's a lot of re there's a lot of um, a lot of fixing, reparation that needs to needs to happen there. Um, but at the same time, it's clear to me that we share so much. We share so much in terms of. Um, you know, we share, a, we share a belief in one creator. We share a belief that that creator is loving. We share a belief that the world is moving towards a better place. We, you know, um, really a lot of the work that I do um, is probably, um, can very easily be in partnership with the work that a, that, 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 that a, that a Christian religious leader uh, is engaged in. Um, the fact that we differ on, on central theological um, um, positions um, is, is understood. And um, and can be discussed and perhaps should be discussed. But to me, that's less important than, than than identifying where we can work together. Because there's so much work to do in the world. It's a shame for us, for for you know for the for um, whoever's we're, bringing more we're, light. We're trying to build the bridge, the, and they, right. we don't want to waste our time throwing stones in the water exactly. while we're building the exactly. bridge. Exactly. Which is uh, coming on quickly now to the um, Yerushalayim Mim party. Maybe you can talk talk a little bit about that, and then we'll go straight into the what you work on the council. Okay, so so I, mean, I would say that we're a party of politicians who have chosen to um, to work together, despite the fact that we are of different um, different uh, Jewish practices. Um, so that um, you know, I am an Orthodox rabbi, a traditional rabbi. Another another partner on my list is a, is a Reform rabbi, and and does not follow Judaism in the traditional manner. Um, and as before, I, I, I noted that my Christian friends and I have very have, have significant differences of opinion. So too I and Tamir, this partner that I have um, in, uh, in 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 politics, um, differ on very very central core uh, uh, values. At the same time, um, when when we're coming to build the city of Jerusalem, in the name uh, in in, uh, in Hebrew, the word the word for Jerusalem is Yerushalayim, which comes from the word Shalom. Which, which translate, often translated as is peace. It also means we also use it for hello, which I say, you know, I think is the proof that the Jews were the first hippies because we've been saying peace, brother, for for hundreds of years. When we see each other, we've been saying shalom. Um, the um, the uh, the place of peace, uh, shalom, Yerushalayim, um, also comes from the Hebrew word shalem, to be whole and to be complete, and. Uh, you know, the, um, we, we, we really can't be whole without, without connecting with each other. So that's, that's the vision of our party. 
Um, it's so, not... so with the party, did you did you have to canvass? Because normally in elections, we've just had an election in the United Kingdom, and normally with elect and here indeed in Israel, we, we've had an election. So normally there's canvassing with uh, leaflets, and uh, I remember the ones from Yeshatid. They were th they were giving out just uh, close to where we're filming today, and. Um, did you canvass? Absolutely. Or? absolutely. I, I mean, I have to say that, that that a political campaign for a politician is probably the hardest, the hardest time of uh, in, 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 in the in the cycle. Um, the, the 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 former leader of our party, who is now actually a member of the Knesset of the Israeli Parliament, uh, 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 MK Rachel Azaria, um, was um, started off in our party as the as the as the leader of our party, and. Um, and she actually said it's the hardest thing she's ever done, even harder than than, than giving birth. So, <laughs> so, um, so you know the the the, the level of the, the, the real the real the real hard work to recruit the support of the voters that are needed to to to, to empower. We have two seats on city council. Jerusalem City Council has thirty members. Our party has two seats. Um, I would say right now there are about eight seats in, in the thirty in the thirty person city council. The way it would. I would say are, are um, what I would call pluralistic parties, and those parties that are not purely sectorial, but parties which are which are which have which are giving a message of, of working together towards the common good, and which I think is a huge um, a breakthrough for Jerusalem. Uh, uh, our viewers won't know, uh, you know, not having the opportunity to visit the council uh, in Jerusalem, um, which, by the way, is just off Jaffa Street. If you <laughs> if you're ever visiting. Uh, and you're in Israel. It's you go down the the Jaffa Street, and um, it's not far off there. Uh, how does it work? Because uh, is there a coalition? Is that is that what you were saying? That's, in other words, there's parties who join together. Uh, because the 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 thing about politics is you're always having to pass legislation, I guess, or or bills. Is that right? Yes. So uh, the way the way the municipal governance in Israel is set up, and by the way. Um, municipal governments, governance is defined by national law. In other words, all the cities are run under exactly the same statutes. Um, and um, in municipal elections, there are two ballots. There's one ballot for the mayor and another ballot for a party for city council. So the mayor is elected directly by the populace. And city council is, is, is basically a, a party system. In other words, um, people, uh, citizens organize in parties and submit, submit lists. And um, and then basically based on based on the percentage of the of the of the vote, you're you're granted seats on city council, um, and then city council, and then there's a process of forming a coalition, and uh, you know similar to probably most parliamentary systems. Uh, exactly like uh, the well, we had a coalition in the United Kingdom, and indeed now in Israel there's a coalition. In fact, it's even news as as we're in the studio that the coalition is. Kind of evolving as Correct. it's uh, Correct. as it's is that the same thing in um, yes although 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 the coalition in, in, in Jerusalem City Council is actually a very broad coalition um, as a matter of fact out of the thirty members of City Council there are only three seats in the opposition so Mayor Barkat who's the current mayor um, chose to make a broad coalition out of uh, out of factions that normally would be at odds and a lot of the issues that normally were at odds about were resolved in the coalition agreement. Um, now that being said, you know what, what what ends up happening is then is then you have um, you have uh, um, partisan politics within the coalition because when the coalition is so broad as to include both the the, the, the liberal both the right and the left, then um, a lot of the partisan politics take place within within the coalition. Um, that's not simple. Um, and that being said, there is a um, there's a sense of, of, of there's, I think Jerusalem right now is a sense of strong leadership, and I also think that our party is bringing a, 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 um, a, a new a new tone to the discourse. You know, for example, there's one neighborhood in Jerusalem which has a tremendous amount of tension between secular and, uh, and ultra orthodox. The, the neighborhood is Kiryat Yovel, um, tremendous amount of tension, um, and um, to the point of, of being on, on, the, on the verge of explosion, um, and. Uh, and the mayor turned to our party and asked us to to to, to lead a, a path of, of of mediation between between the elements there, because as a, as again as a pluralistic party we're a natural candidate for that. So so we so we work very closely with with, with Mayor Barkat. Um, we also there there are particular portfolios which we which um, which we hold under the coalition agreement and they include the the portfolio of education, portfolio of transportation, the portfolio of 
of preservation of, of buildings, which in Jerusalem is a very, uh, is a very sensitive issue. Uh, women's issues, children's rights. Um, so, so we have areas of focus that, that, that are given to us under the coalition agreement. Now, uh, one of the things about Jerusalem is it's, uh, uh, many of our viewers will have, um, some of them will have been here uh, as tourists and uh, on tours and visited here is the provision of hotels and, and, uh, and visiting uh, Jerusalem. Do you, uh, how does the council get involved with that? The sense of, um, you know, being involved in Jerusalem, that they come here and they really want to visit all the sites. Uh, one of the issues I could see uh, that there could be in Jerusalem is that you've got a limit to what you can do. In other words, there's the roads, for example, because <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, you want to city. preserve the city. It's you don't want to change the... That's right. It's a historic city, and like any historic city, it's not built on a grid, and, and you can't make the roads wider just because it makes sense for transportation. Um, the, the new light rail, I think, has opened up a lot of possibilities in Jerusalem and made transportation much better, and we're about to add a second line, and, 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 and soon after that, a third line. But, um, but there's also more, there are other methods, you know, we're, we're, we expect within a year to have, um, to have uh, bicycle rentals, you know, automated bicycle rentals um, spread, th spread throughout the historic city of Jerusalem. Oh, so, uh, is, so if, if, our, if our viewers are visiting Jerusalem, uh, they can get a, they'll be able to hire a bike and right. with, a, with, with a, a credit card. With a credit card. With a credit card and an automated machine and hire a bike. And um, right now we're working out the details. For instance, we very much would like somebody who's riding his bike uphill to pay less than somebody who's riding his bike downhill so that you know, you'll be incentivized to return your bike to a station that's at the high, on the higher ground. Um, but really it's about making Jerusalem the best possible city to live in but while, while, while preserving um, its, its holiness, while preserving its, uh, its, its history. Um, is it is it difficult because uh, you're limited as a city council to the budget, and I guess so many you know education is wanting the budget and transportation is wanting the budget. Jerusalem, Jerusalem is actually a very uh, a relatively poor city um, in Israel. It's the largest city in all of Israel um, in terms of its population, um, and it has a very large. There's two large segments of the population that that pay that pay minimal or no taxes. And I'm speaking about the ultra orthodox um, um, sector, um, many of whom do not work. And I'm speaking about the the Arab sec the Arab population, who um, who really do not fully realize their, their 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 right to vote in protest, and because of that, are not in the system. So, the municipality is supporting a lot of people who are not paying full municipal taxes, and that and, and that's a, that's a huge challenge. Um, our competitive advantage is that we're a capital city, and uh, and in that respect, the government takes a different level of responsibility for um, for investing in our infrastructure. Um, but but at the end of the day, Jerusalem is very has very meager resources, and um, you know the uh, um, you know as right now I'm holding the, the the education portfolio, and I can tell you that the um, the battle over resources to to, to provide much needed reno school renovations is, is is vicious, and it's because of it's because of the fact that it's not it's it's not a wealthy city. And a, lo a lot of the buildings in, in Jerusalem, because of the whole nature of the city, are old and uh, yes. need, need renovation. And Correct. So it must be a constant battle to, to know which building you know, has, the, has, has the bite of the cherry first. Yes, yes. And, 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 and of course, that's also an opportunity for people who, who love Israel and love Jerusalem to get involved. And um, you know, we have, we, the, we, uh, there are some Christian organizations that I work with to, um, to, to, to help out in, in particular areas. And, um, and those are very those are very important partnerships. I think they're also important partnerships in terms of strengthening the sense. Um, after again, you know, you know, many thousands of years where Jews felt hated by Christians, um, and I think that that many of us know that that they're Christians who love Israel, and um, and, I, and and that's and the fact that that manifests in um, you know, on the ground, I think, is, is 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 very significant in terms of in terms of driving that home. Now, I think a lot of our viewers would be very interested to know. Uh, about the old city, how does that work? Is that is that they pay? I guess the some that would pay pay tax, and but there's a lot of maintenance, I guess, in the old city. The old city uh, life in the old city of Jerusalem is very complicated. My mother-in-law happens to live in the old city of Jerusalem in the Jewish quarter. Um, the old city is divided, of course, into four um, different quarters: um, a Jewish quarter, an, an Arab quarter, or I would say a Muslim quarter, a, a Christian quarter, and a uh, and an Armenian quarter. 
Um, and the tourists, I guess, go through all of these. And quarters. the tourists go through all of them, and the, and the sites are, are in all of them. Um, but if you're walking through the old city of Jerusalem, you'll notice that the streets are very narrow. Um, garbage disposal is a huge challenge. So they have these tractors, that these tiny tractors that roll through the, the, the sidewalks. And when that tractor's coming down the street, everybody's got to find a doorway to, to go up and stand in as it, at, or in order for it to squeeze by. Um, there are a lot of festivals that take place in the old city, um, which are great for tourism, but a nightmare for the residents because it means that sometimes for, for, for a week you can't get your car in or out of the, of, of the neighborhood. And, um, and, that, and that in itself can be a huge challenge. The Jerusalem Marathon, um, which is an annual, a huge annual event, which I love, um, runs through the narrow alleyways of the old city of Jerusalem. And if there are any, if there are any marathon runners watching the show, it's definitely one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the races you should, you should do at least once in your life. When is the Jerusalem Marathon? So it's, um, it's, uh, it's usually, it takes place um, towards the end of the winter, like early spring. And, um, and uh, you know, if, if anybody Googles so the Jerusalem Marathon. So you have to marathon, book your, that's your, right. your book tour your, for, um, absolutely, absolutely. For, the, uh, for then if you would like to be involved in the um, Jerusalem Marathon. Now, the, one of the things that's going on in, and you may see this if you're coming to visit Israel, is the road huge amount of road construction coming on number one. Is that connected with the Jerusalem City Council or is that something separate? No, absolutely. That's key for Jerusalem. Um, you know, first of all, the, um, one, one of, one of um, our major uh, platforms for strengthening the, the, the city is, is moving all of the, the, the center of governance in Israel to Jerusalem. Right now, it's split between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And Tel Aviv um, has a lot, of, a lot of government buildings, but it's, it's close to the airport. It has easy access to the entire country. Um, and it's very clear that, that you know, when, the, when the drive from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem sh shifts from 50 minutes to 20 minutes, which is really the goal, uh, you know, a 20 minute uh, from uh, Tel Aviv express City train. Center? The, 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 there, there's a high speed rail that's going in, which is meant to be, which is meant to be 20 minutes from, from the central bus station in Jerusalem to the bus, bus station in Tel Aviv. And, um, and, and the drive as well, you know, we're going from, we're going from a, from a four lane highway to a, to a, to a six lane highway. And in some, in some places an eight lane highway. So, um, so the, a lot of the conge congestion will be re relieved. A lot of the, um, a lot of the commuters will shift to, to the rail, and um, and, and it, it, there's no doubt that it will be a boom, a boon for Jerusalem, both for business, for government, uh, for for, for gov governance, and um, you know that together with the municipal light rail, really Jerusalem is looking is looking, I think, at a very uh, a very different future, and a, and a, you know a future with much more, with, with more tourism, more commerce, and hopefully more resources. Um, you know, part of part of the um, Part of the sectorial tension is, is the battle for resources, so that, so that making Jerusalem a, 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 healthy, a healthy city from a fiscal perspective will also relieve a lot of the civil, the civil pressure. And uh, you know, the, one of the things is, is that uh, we've, if you've ever been on the uh, number one motorway coming into, into Jerusalem, is that if you're stuck behind a truck on certain parts, you almost <laughs> you have nowhere right. to go. So this will really. Do we know when the when this will be finished? This project? Yes, we're. I mean, right now we're, we're in a, a lot. A lot of the road works will be finished in 2017, and I think the entire project, including including the fast rail, uh, will be finished in two, in 2020. Um, so you know, for a project of that size, certainly by by Israeli standards, um, things are proceeding nicely. And um, and anybody who anybody who travels between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Can see how hard they're working. I mean, there are times when you can see you can see uh, you know 40, 40 bulldozers at once working on a section of uh, a section of uh, of road, um, and it's going to be a gradual, uh, a gradual uh, launch so that so that some of the issues will already be improving you know from year to year. And is it is it possible uh, to do work uh, on the east side? Is that uh, uh, uh you know, there's the politics, and then there's uh, the practicality of the limited uh, space sometimes yeah. well, to to do roads there. Or uh... well, the Jerusalem municipality and the govern government of Israel are investing in East Jerusalem. Um, investing in East Jerusalem is an interesting situation um, because, on the one hand, the um, the um, uh, political left, which are coming from a humanitarian or or um, or a pro um, a pro Palestinian perspective, want East Jerusalem to be developed. 
um, in order to for the benefit of the residents, and the right wing, uh, who um, who, uh, who are coming from a from a you know Jerusalem United perspective, um, and Jerusalem is ours perspective, want to be investing in East Jerusalem in order to to, to assert responsibility and ownership. Uh, in other words, you know, ironically, to not invest in East Jerusalem is almost a statement of well, eventually it won't be ours anyway. So. So there's, there really is actually a common, a common interest in investing in East Jerusalem. Unfortunately, there are many, many years of, of neglect that, that have to be made up, and you can't make up you know, decades of neglect in, in a few short years. Um, but I think that what we've seen a, a huge change over the last, over the last five years, um, you know, building, building new roads, building classrooms. There's a tremendous deficit of classrooms in East Jerusalem. Um, and... Um, now, certainly, I can speak for for our party, and I think that the, that this is shared by the mayor and his party as well. Um, the the Arabs in East Jerusalem are residents of the city, and and um, and you know the services that are provided to the municipality are not a political issue at all. They have nothing to do, and and the Arab-Israeli conflict is being dealt with on a national level, not on a municipal level. The, neither the mayor nor myself are going to be next to, are going to be at the table when negotiations take place. Um, but, 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 but we do carry a responsibility for the children and the families and, uh, and, and the day-to-day -day lives of the, of, the, of, the, of the Arab residents of East Jerusalem. It's been so interesting. Having, I've got so many more questions, uh, Rabbi Aaron, to ask you, and we've run out of time. So thank you so much for coming across. I know you've got to uh, go off and you've got lots of uh, appointments. So thank you so much um, for informing us about Jerusalem. I know that uh, it's really helped a lot of our viewers that you'll understand more about the importance of the city of Jerusalem and um, you'll be thinking of Rabbi Aaron as you go about your work, a fantastic work in the community and we haven't even touched about your work with the Kashrut and with kosher restaurants and that's a whole, uh, a whole story in itself. Uh, don't forget if you want to email us, you can email us at info at in the last days .com. Really great, we really enjoy receiving uh, your emails and your letters uh, and it's because of your support that we're able to do this program today and don't forget we are living in the last days you've been watching in the last days a tv program with martin and natalie blackham the program that looks at israel and the end times with teaching from a hebraic perspective if you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter. Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In The Last Days.